talking about sustainability in, in your own project, uh, the best tall building winner in Abu Dhabi, Sowa Square, uh, a certain amount of uh, sustainability going on there. Um, surprising to see sustainability like this in the Middle East? Well, I think everybody that goes over there, the first thing they're aware of is how uh, hostile the environment is in the summer months. So, um, you know, I think everyone knows that, that, um, that you have to do something to mitigate that in some way. And there are different ways to do it. Some um, people have uh, built, designed and built buildings and called them su sustainable. And uh, basically they built a bunch of photovoltaics out in the desert and reduce the energy consumption. But uh, that's one way to do it. We tried to do something uh, where, you know, you uh, basically provided shading for the building and each facade of the building experiences the sun in a different way, so it requires a kind of a different shading strategy on each, each side of the building. Uh, you know, for us it was very um, uh, interesting uh, place to work and I, I think the, the, uh, the sympathy for being able to design a building that is sustainable uh, is um, something that we didn't necessarily always have the experience in the U.S., that it's you know, more of a dollar and cent thing. and It's a little more, a little less energy cost, but you know, it's, it's not worth the initial investment. So, When you have a building like this in such an extreme environment, whether it's heat or cold, uh, you know, maybe the uh, initial uh, response to that would be uh, seal up the building and crank up the climate control. Is there more than that going on here? Well, I think in, in there the, you do have to seal up the building because particularly in Abu Dhabi, not only is it hot, but it's extremely humid. So uh, it's not a matter in the summer months or, you know, or even in the fall and the summer to open up the, uh, the windows and you know, let the fresh air come in. Now, maybe in the winter it, it is, the climate is, you know, is superb, but uh, so the, the strategy is more to, uh, I think, for shading and, and also maybe taking advantage of daylight by reducing the amount of, uh, of energy for lighting and things like that. When we talk about sustainability, uh, it, some might find it kind of surprising that you've got 4,800 parking spaces here uh, with lead gold. What is different about Abu Dhabi that, uh, that would put that kind of parking in a sustainable building? Well. <laughs> One way or another, in all of these uh, countries, they have codes that are based on Western uh, ideas, and there was a code requirement for 4,200 cars. Now, I'm not ducking the issue by saying that we only did it because of codes, but I mean, that, that's the starter. Now, maybe the code is based on uh, sound reasoning. The, um, you know, the, as compared to the, the question, I think, implied uh, that they don't do it in London, they don't do it in New York, uh, where they use, you know, mass transit. But mass transit is really effective in an urban area where there's a lot of, of, uh, a lot of density. Here we were building on an island that had nothing on it before. And, uh, and the demographics in that area, the people who work in these buildings, are uh, primarily, and, and the, 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 the companies that are gonna occupy it are international companies, they're kind of regional headquarters, they're highly uh, populated with executives who are you know, prone to drive their own car, or have drivers and so forth. So it's not like when you have a back office uh, uh, location in, uh, down uh, in Manhattan or in London where you have a couple thousand people arriving on a, you know, by subway and so forth. So it's, it's, it's just a fundamentally different, um, different uh, kind of demographic. And you, you kind of have to th also keep in mind <laughs> that in the whole UAE, there are f only four and about four and a half million people and maybe a little over or a little under a million are Emiratis, almost two million of them are, are workers, Bangladeshi, Indian, um, uh, Pakistanis and so forth who wouldn't be using that kind of transportation anyway and then there are the expats that, uh, that, would, uh, that are going to and from. Now Soa Square does have a light rail plan in the, in the future 
And when the density is there, I'm sure they're going to use it. But in the meantime, this is you know a kind of an emerging uh, uh, city. Uh, it's a brand new downtown, so it just isn't the density of population that would uh, that lends itself to mass transit. Well, you mentioned one future use or future uh, adaptation in mass transit. How is this building, quote unquote, sustainable in the long term in this environment? You know, I have to say that some I was always a little bit uncomfortable with uh, to go into the desert and kind of pump on your chest and say I'm designing sustainable buildings because probably, you know, if you really looked at kind of the essence of what sustainable means, maybe you would, you know, look for a climate that's a little more, more hospitable. But, uh, you know, that you know, we don't, we're not in a position where we can kind of choose where we want to work. There's, uh, I think those countries at the same time have a desire to develop those countries uh, and, and uh, their economies and uh, provide lives for their, their citizens and so forth. And I think it's to their credit that they're doing what they can in terms of sustainable design. But we, we, I think we all have to realize that they're starting further back in the race just because of the hostility of the environment.